to the Trump 42 American Air Force Base, which by the CIA, that sold off the American soldiers. Occasionally you'll hear the old person or freelance or somebody like Howard Marks, who was jailed for dealing in cannabis. Later on in his life, he freely admitted he worked for an MIC, but he got caught. Anyway, the Americans discovered in the late 70s and early 80s that if you take cocaine and add a couple of chemicals to it, you get cocaine in rock or crystal, uh, commonly known as crime. The American government was given to the people or selling it to the people uh, to, to back this proof up. Like I said, the talking came out of Colombia through Panama onto the oil field of Rick's into America. Now, this is a chain of command along the way. And one person got Dick Greenby and his name was Noriega, who was president of Panama at the time. The American CIA decided he was a bit of a problem. So against all international law, America invaded Panama, kidnapped him, took him to America and tried him in an American court. Now, in this country, if a diplomat killed somebody, run somebody over, he got straight away diplomatic immunity. Where was Noriega's diplomatic immunity? Where was the rest of the world outcry that America invaded a country just to take one man prisoner and take back? That broke all international law. Nobody in the world said a word. Oh, he's just a drug dealer, it doesn't matter. That laid the foundations for America invading Iraq. We were all talking about know, this question of mass destruction. Where are they? You know, one of the biggest lies the American government has ever come out with. But because of what they did in Panama, it gave them free reign. And it does anywhere in the world today. I mean, the country where I grew up, uh, Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe, got a right massive choice there. And where's America? Where's Britain? You know, that, that McGarvey is killing millions of his own people. But where, where are the governments of the world ready to invade that land to put the people right and say this? Simple reason is America and Britain pulled out of Rhodesia, Zimbabwe, because they used up all the minerals, they used up all the resources. There's nothing there for you know, no monetary gain. But like, some of the best cannabis in the world is actually grown. They've not to it out that way, yeah? <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll, I'll let Columbia and then get back to this country. Um, uh, a funny thing happened to me. Uh, it was, I had my passport there to knock me. And I always thought it was because I wouldn't work for MI6 and Spiral. As to what, because I wasn't crossed in Bogota by a couple of British agents. But in January of this year, my father died. Uh, so as well as going through his personal belongings, I found his service record. Uh, he actually did four years in the British Army in Malaya. Now, me and my father never really spoke to each other about our army experiences. But I'm, I'm reading his service record. And uh, he was in the Royal Army Medical Corps. And that's all I knew about it. But when I went further into his service record, he was attached to the 22nd Special Air Service in Malay. And also, in the will, what he wrote, he, he was apologizing for my passport being taken off me. He was responsible. He knew what I'd been doing. And in his way to save my life, he, he got the passport to help me. Oh, you know, the rest of history. But it just goes to show that people who are in the North, in elite regiments or in elite parts of the government, do have a hell of a lot of control and can manipulate lives. 
And that's just one little instance. But when you look at drugs as a whole, you suddenly realise that the governments are manipulating us all. It's like there were delegates from the Vatican who came to see Escobar and were buying tons and tons of cocaine, shipping it from Colombia to Rome. And I've since met two ex MI6 operatives who have confirmed this and said from Rome, British ship it into London and then distribute it around the country. Now, if you think there's like 60 million people in this country and every weekend there's a good 20 million people taking drugs uh, on a most fashion on is cocaine. That is a hell of a lot of cocaine. And then you see on the TV, oh, we've done a major drug bust. We've, we've seized over a ton of cocaine. A ton of cocaine won't last the city a weekend. So there's a hell of a lot of drugs coming into this country. And they're coming in by the British Secret Service. They are the major volume. The reason for it is the drugs industry is the second biggest commerce in the world today. Oil is the first one. So it's in government's interest to be involved with the drug trade. They're making a hell of a lot of money. Now the other thing that struck me was this country has 60, 65 million people in it. America has 120 million people in it. How come America's military might is so massive, the technology they have is so massive, who's paying for it? When we've got a country like us, which is half the population, yet our military, our technology is way, way behind the Americans. We can't afford it. So we're, you know, like America, for example, where are they getting the money? And the simple reason is the American public pay the taxes, it goes on record, you give a list of expenditures, everybody's out. Millions and millions each day from cocaine alone. 